Praise the Lord, everyone. It's another great Sunday here at 153greatfish.website. And I uh, hope you're all doing well out there. Uh, fall is definitely in the air. A um, lot going on, but I uh, have a topic that I want to speak about that will help encourage you for those of you that have a passion for winning souls to Christ. But as always, we need to pray and ask the presence of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to be part of our Bible study. Lord God, we just pray that you would make a difference in every soul winner's life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to head right to the uh, the PowerPoint here. And uh, we're going to talk about this topic today, persecution of the soul winner. Persecution of the soul winner. Got a few scriptures here today, so be patient as I read through them. Here's the outline. Trouble, persecution, tribulation of the soul winner. And we're going to talk about the sufferings of the soul winner. The courage and mental toughness of a soul winner. Agape love of the soul winner. Perseverance and strength of the soul winner. And those five topics are what we're going to talk about today. So let's begin with the idea of trouble, persecution, tribulation. So let's, here's a Greek word. It's called thlipsis. There's the Greek T, there's the L. Thlipsis, pressured, persecution. Tribulation trouble is found 45 times in the New Testament. This word is going to pop up all over the place when you find the words trouble, persecution, trouble, uh, persecution. And then scandalizo, tripped up, scandalized, offended. And of course, Jesus coins this word in the Garden of Gethsemane. You'll find this word 30 times. Now, the reason these two words go together is that the enemy will try to slander and start rumors and gossip, those three things, about the soul winner. The soul winner will experience these things both inside and outside the church. So let's go on and read about it. Now, they were dispersed, it says in Acts 11:19, abroad upon the persecution, the thalipsis, the pressure, that arose about Stephen, traveling as far as Phenis, Cyprus, Antioch, preaching the word to none but the Jews only. Persecution always results in revival. God spreads the church. And of course, when people get persecuted, they move on because Jesus told them to flee from one city to another. And Jesus said to them in the Garden of Gethsemane in Mark 14, he said, All of you shall be scandalized, offended, because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered or dispersed. Leaders are particularly susceptible to scandal or rumor, uh, slander would be a, our modern day word for it. And of course, once the rumors and the slander and the gossip gets going, there's an emotional response by people, and then the pogrom, the persecution begins. But it's never about truth, it's usually about a lie. And so that's usually how persecutions begin, is with a lie. And the soul winner will experience this in their lifetime, both inside and outside the church. So he goes on to say, there's a blessing given to the deserving listeners. Uh, read about this in Matthew 10. It says, so when you go to a town or a village, find somebody worthy enough to have you as their guest. Stay with them until you leave. When you go to a house, give it your blessing of peace. In other words, when a soul winner goes uh, to an environment, a city, a location, whatever, their peace begins to rest upon that home, that peace of God, the blessing. Now, if the house is deserving, and here's your message, let your blessing remain with them. Now, I don't know exactly what that means. I don't know how you let your blessing remain with them. Maybe you stay there or you develop a relationship, a long-term relationship. My guess is this is supernatural. God's blessing remains with them as long as they treat the soul winner right. But if the home isn't deserving, take back your blessing of peace. And I think God does this. God removes the blessing off that home. See, a lot of people don't understand, okay, it's, and, and the people of the world and sinners don't understand that the blessing of God falls on the just and the unjust. God is a blesser. But if they begin to persecute the church and they don't repent and that person needs to leave or get out of there, the blessing comes off, the wheels come off the cart, things begin to go bad. Jesus says this, if someone won't welcome you or listen to your message, leave that place and shake the dust from your feet. So I don't think <laughs> shaking dust from your feet applies today. That was something that they did before they entered a house. But what he's saying is that you get dirty in a place like that because they don't receive your message and that dirt clings to your feet. He's just saying, move on, forget about it. Don't uh, worry about what happened to you there because God is going to remove the blessing. 
He says, I promise you that the day of judgment will be easier for the towns of Sodom and Gomorrah than for undeserving places. So just remember this, if people don't receive your message. Now, the soul winner has a message. Now, there's a lot of hidden Christians out there that won't even speak the message. They'll say, my lifestyle preaches. <laughs> Listen, without the word, nobody gets saved without preaching. If you don't love them enough to give them the truth, then what kind of Christian are you? Your light is not shining. You need to broadcast the message. And that's what I have to say to you. I can't tell you the number of times I've had people talk about the, uh, the silent Christian. Oh, they're such nice people. Uh, did they ever give you the gospel? No, <laughs> they might be nice, but they're a silent witness, which is a false witness. So there's another word called dioko, and that means to pursue for purposes of persecution, press someone towards suffering. And this is when a dioko happens, this is, occurs 44 times in the New Testament, you're being pursued. And of course, the enemy pursues the soul winner. John 5.16, uh, therefore did the Jews persecute, pursue Jesus, and they sought to murder him. Now, how you murder somebody is with slander, gossip, rumor, okay? That's what they wanted to spread about Jesus, that he was a false prophet, etc. Uh, don't be surprised if people use the word cult. That's their favorite one when they want to persecute you for preaching the truth. Uh, how about the word, uh, uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're mentally ill, things like that. That's a common way to deco, deoco somebody, okay? So... Matthew 10, Jesus says this, But when they persecute, dioko you in this city, go to another one. For the disciple is not above his master. Jesus is telling them, I've been persecuted. I've been pursued. Somebody's pressed me towards suffering with rumor, slander, and gossip. If they have called the master of the house, Beelzebub, Satan, feces, that's what the word Beelzebub means, is feces, how much more shall they call them of his household? He's talking about his disciples. What I tell you, Preach upon the housetops. Now, this is he's coming against the silent witnesses who says, My lifestyle preaches. Hey, your lifestyle's great, but Muslims can have a great lifestyle, right? So can secular humanists, so can an atheist. They can, their lifestyle, they can be kind to people and use phileo love to uh, attract people to them. But what the Bible requires is preaching to save people. Preaching. He, Jesus says, don't fear them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus is identifying that people don't preach because of fear. The silent witness is full of fear. And the Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. Listen, if you have the gospel, if you know the truth and you're not preaching it, okay, then why do you have fear? Get on your knees. Ask Jesus to deliver you, to give you a boldness to overcome that fear. That's what we need, folks. So, 2 Corinthians 1, Paul, of course, says this, For we would not have you know, Corinthian brothers, or have you ignorant of the persecution. Here is the word ellipsis again, the pressure which came to us in Asia. And I think he's referring to the persecution of Ephesus, where he was uh, uh, nearly torn apart and fed to the lions, where we were pressed flat. We were completely out of strength. We were made miserable even of living. We felt a sentence of death within ourselves, which caused us to stop trusting in our own survival, but only in God's resurrection. That's persecution. Paul thought he was going to die. They said, I'm ready to die. This, is, this can't get any worse. But God saved us from sure death and continues to deliver us, who showed us his trustworthiness. You also help by praying for us. Listen, if you're afraid of persecution, Paul is telling you, have you been pressed flat? Have you been fed to lions? Have you been torn apart? Have you been caned? Have you been whipped? Uh, that's something you should fear, maybe. But he's saying, God delivered us, and they suffered. They suffered bad in Asia for preaching, preaching, preaching. Matthew 5, 44 says this, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And he's talking about persecution. And persecute, dioko you. Make yourselves the children of your Father which is in heaven. Jesus says the response to this kind of persecution is agape love. Not that filio kind where we're best friends and pals, but he's talking about agape love. Do them good. Pray for them. Bless them that curse you. Why? Because you pour coals of fire on their head. That's why. The sufferings of the soul winner. 
Paul participated in the stoning of Stephen, uh, Stephen in Jerusalem. He blasphemed the church. He imprisoned many. He voted many to death. He compelled Christians to blaspheme. And he zealously conducted anti-Christian pogroms. Uh, this is probably why God gave him the ministry of suffering. Jesus told Ananias that Paul would suffer for his name. Key, for his name. Notice this, for his name. Persecution in the name of Jesus go hand in hand. You're going to see this throughout the scripture now. Persecution in the name of Jesus go hand in hand. But Paul described his pre-Christ life as a persecutor and an intolerant man. He was zealous to lock up and kill Christians. He was intolerant. He was a persecutor. And then, before being shipped to Rome, Paul recounts his own sufferings. He called it the thorn in his flesh, given him to balance the revelations he received. Jesus permitted Paul to be persecuted, okay, because it balanced his revelations, not because he had conducted pogroms. A lot of people would say, well, that's the doctrine of retribution. God gives you payment for what you did in your pre-Christ life. Nothing could be further from the truth. Paul says his sufferings were given as a balance to his revelations. God did not want him to fall into pride, spiritual pride. But here's what, he, here's what Paul suffered. He's whippings from the Jews five times. Now, when the Jews whipped you, they had a rule. You could only receive up to 39 stripes. Why did they whip him when they got him? When they got hold of him, it's because of synagogue splits. Okay, And even today... There are rabbis that criticize Christians. They've reinterpreted the Old Testament, especially Isaiah 7.14, Isaiah 53. These guys are liars. Now, it doesn't give us the right to go on a program against them or be anti-Semitic, but we know that a false religion persecutes a true religion. So he got whippings from the Jews five times. He was caned by the Gentiles three times. And, of course, Gentiles were oftentimes stirred up by the Jews, but sometimes they were stirred up because of people that were losing money when people got converted, okay? The love of money is the root of all evil. So false religion is evil, okay? And you'll skip persecution from those in false religion. Don't be surprised if you get persecuted for preaching about the name of Jesus Christ in water baptism by people that believe in things like the Trinity. It's common. They will find a way to whip people up, rumor you, slander you, criticize you, stir up a persecution, it's common, okay? Stoned in Lystra. Paul, they stoned him. You know, Stephen was stoned and Paul was holding coast, but here he got stoned in Lystra. However, God preserved him. That's in the, the Lyca Onea province, Central Asia Minor. He was assumed dead. He got up and went to, uh, I believe it was uh, Berea, or uh, I'm not sure which town he got up, but he walked away with the disciples. He was shipwrecked adrift, adrift in the Mediterranean Sea three times. One time, it was a day and a night. I mean, this was, was crazy. I mean, this guy suffered. And he was imprisoned. And, and of course, we know that uh, his one prison account is in Acts 16 in Philippi in Macedonia, which became one of the strongest churches. So he was in fastings often. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He endured false brothers, people that say they're Christians, but they're in it for the money or manipulation or fame. You know, false brothers. I'm going to tell you what. These guys that uh, uh, claim to be Christians, but they they got million-dollar homes, and they've got, uh, they're have got they riding Mercedes. I don't understand these kinds of people. Sleepless and fatigued, Paul said. He suffered. 1 Corinthians 15, he says, Paul says, Why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. And when he says that, I die daily, he's saying, I'm persecuted every day. A lot of people want to turn that into, I repent every day, but he is talking about persecution, and here's the context. After the manner of men, I have fought with the beasts at Ephesus. This is where he felt like dying, okay? Ephesus really got to him, and what a revival there was there. He was, he was there for a year and a half teaching at a Bible school. They say that one-third of Ephesus converted to Christianity, and he was persecuted for it. Uh, he says, what advantage is it to me if the dead don't rise? Let us, not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. In other words, he says, I endured persecution at Ephesus because of the resurrection. Okay, That gave him strength. Listen, even if they kill your body, you're going to resurrect. Be a preacher. Paul says, I die daily. That's the mantra of the soul winner, broadcasting the persecution that is ongoing towards your own person and ministry. Don't be surprised. If rumors, slander, gossip are started about you inside and outside the church because 
the, uh, false brethren are inside the church, the devil persecutes the soul winner. <laughs> he persecutes especially somebody preaching the name of Jesus, that Acts 2.38, water baptism, name of Jesus, gospel. Can you say praise the Lord? Courage and mental toughness. Now, in Philippi of Macedonia, Paul cast out a devil from the annoying damsel with the soothsaying spirit. I said that fast, didn't I? This brought Gentile caning and persecution. He was thrown, he was caned, and then he was he and Silas, he was thrown into the inner prison. And But what did he do? That was the city of vision. Philippi was the city of vision. The man called Paul to come help. The city of Lydia, the seller of purple. And this is the church of Philippi that eventually funded Paul during his great missions to Corinth. It was Paul's favorite church, and it had great leaders, okay? And I believe Lydia was one of those leaders. And maybe even the, the, uh, the, the girl that had the soothsaying spirit who got delivered. So Paul gets thrown into the inner prison at Philippi. After singing praise to Jesus, an earthquake opened the doors and shook the foundation, the Bible says. How do you get courage and mental toughness? You praise God during the trial, during the persecution. You get courage and mental toughness. God delivered and showed himself strong to Paul. The jailer comes and throws himself down on the floor and says to Paul, you know, what do I have to do to be saved? Now, Paul first said to him, don't kill yourself. Now, that's love. You could be really angry at that jailer for having you caned and, and mistreating you in the inner prison. You could be really upset. But Paul gave him agape love. He says, don't kill yourself. We're all here. Because the Romans certainly would have killed him for allowing a prison break. And so Paul, that hour, it says, the, 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 the jailer uh, washed his stripes, and he and his whole household were baptized. Can you say praise the Lord? So mental toughness comes from praising Jesus during persecution, which then brings revival. This became the great church of Philippi, of Macedonia, that supported Paul in his missions. So Acts 16 says this, Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light. The jailer sprang in and came trembling, fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And of course, Paul then delivered the Acts 2.38 gospel. So the agape love of the soul winner, the sinner in the world looks for phileo relationship love in the Christian. And it does. That Our love, our agape starts with phileo love, which is relationship. However, agape love delivers the truth in spite of the cost of the relationship. If you want to keep your friends and you haven't given them the gospel, then what good did you do? You're simply salt that lost the savor. The savor is the truth. And the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians that people will receive a delusion if they don't have the love of the truth. And that's what God is looking for. Jesus is looking for people that have the love of the truth. So even a Muslim starts with phileo love and builds a relationship by doing good deeds to endear people to you. Okay? But agape love delivers that Acts 2.38 truth in spite of the cost to the relationship. That's true love right here, folks. Love of the truth. Galatians 1.6, Paul says this to the Galatian church, I marvel that you are so soon removed of him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Paul did not let their foolishness go unconfronted. He confronted them. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Paul, conf <laughs> Paul was not a guy who didn't practice confrontation. He practiced it when things were wrong. O oh, foolish Galatians, who has deceived you that you should obey, you should have not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been presented as crucified among you? That's found in Galatians 3.1. Paul is telling them, it's the truth that saved you. And he's risking his relationship with this church by confronting the foolishness and, of course, that foolishness was they were Judaized with legalism from the Old Testament law by some Jewish converts. And Paul just goes right after it. That's why he brings up Peter, who had done the same thing in Antioch, and that had been settled in Acts 15, that the Gentiles didn't need to circumcise, didn't need cast root uh, dietary laws. Paul confronts people that are falling away when they don't have the truth. Listen, if people are telling you to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, show me that scripture. Send me, I'll send you $10 if you can find that scripture. So look in your Bible. Search for it. That will not save you. The only thing that will save you is Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. That's agape, my agape love for you today. Can you say praise the Lord? 
Paul says this, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in doing so, you are heaping purifying coals of fire on his head. Listen, if somebody's persecuting you and they're outside the church, what you need to do is to love them with that agape, phileo love. Be kind to them, do good to them, pray for them that despitefully use you. You're putting coals of fire on their heads to purify their thinking about you. Because there'll be a lot of rumors, a lot of gossip, a lot of slander about the soul winner. Can you say praise the Lord? In John uh, 21, Jesus said, As soon then as they were come to shore, they saw coals of fire there along with fish and bread lay on. What Jesus is saying here, or this scripture is showing us, is that coals of fire purify the fish, give you pure bread. He's talking about being kind. And that's what Jesus did. He used phileo love before agape love, and we need to do the same. But even a Muslim does that. But agape delivers the truth. That's the agape love of the soul winner. Perseverance and strength. I said, soul winners face opposition inside and outside the church. If you're going to start a church, believe me, you're going to get oppos opposition inside the church. If you've got a lot of miracle signs and wonders and revival in your church, you're going to get people to criticize you who you thought were your brothers. Listen, don't be surprised because Satan can use anybody. After his revelation of Jesus' identity, Peter was rebuked because Satan had put words in his mind that came out of his mouth. You can read about that in Matthew 16:23. Jesus knew it was Satan, not Peter. He says, Satan, I rebuke thee. Peter was used by Satan. Here's his, one of his closest friends, one of his three closest friends. And sure enough, Job had the same thing happen to him. They were, don't be surprised if inside the church you get pushed back. Just follow the voice of the Lord. Continue to win souls. And pastors out there, if you've got a soul winner in your church, put a hedge about them. Recognize that people inside the church will criticize them. Start rumors will come against them, okay? You need to make sure that your soul winners, okay, your people that are bringing people to Christ, that you put a fence about them and don't receive any accusations against a soul winner, but by two or three witnesses, okay, and make sure you get rid of the false witnesses. You need to examine their testimony. Outside the church, you're not going to prevent that pastor. That, that soul winner has got to put on the whole armor of God and, and put on the shield of faith to quench the darts of the enemy. Rumor. Uh, falsehoods, gossip, slander. Faith quenches those darts. The best way to handle persecution is prayer and agape love, coals of fire. Satan's opposition is especially fierce to water baptism in the name of Jesus. You will find if you preach this, you will get every devil to come out of the woodwork putting thoughts in people's heads. Get Expect to hear the word cult. That's their, their worst word, cult, you know. Uh, they will slander you, say that you steal money, uh, all kinds of things that you, uh, well, in the, the early church's day, uh, that you sacrifice babies to uh, uh, idols, all kinds of things will be said. Just remember, if you're going to preach water baptism in the name of Jesus, you're going to get persecution because all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That's in the Beatitudes. Shake your, rejoice because the Bible says when you get persecuted because your name is written in heaven. The main devices of Satan, as I said, are there. Remember, the person being used by Satan is not the enemy. We must pray for them as Jesus removes blessing and grace from them after the persecution is complete. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. They are removing their own blessing, okay? And God blesses everybody, but when people start having a bad time, is it because the blessing has been removed? I'm going to tell you something. If you're one of those who's persecuted somebody like Paul did, time to repent. Get your blessing back. Follow them. Bless them. Okay? Find a way to be part of the movement of God in this world. Acts 5.40 says this, And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles, they beat them. They commanded they should not speak what? The name of Jesus. The water baptism. Acts 2.38 Gospel. Don't speak about that name of Jesus. Because in water baptism, the name of Jesus remits your sins. It removes sins. That's why the devil's so fierce and against it. Listen, as long as we have a holy trinity, we'll let that go by un unchallenged. But there is no trinity in your Bible. But the name of Jesus is the only name they used in the book of Acts for baptizing people. This is the name under heaven whereby we must be saved, Acts 4 and 12. As many of you have been baptized, have put on Christ, okay? The name of Jesus is what the devil fears the most, because once you've got the name of Jesus, your name is written in heaven. Your sins are gone. You are a child of Christ. You are part of his household because you got his name. So they told him not to preach the name of Jesus, and they let him go. 
You're always going to be told by the persecutors, don't speak in the name of Jesus. And then they departed from the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. I'm going to tell you about my friend uh, uh, Tarnu over there in Africa. He uh, baptized some converts in a Trinity church, six of them, and the people of that church had him arrested and locked up and Cain. They were beaten and he was held for two days. They were going to murder him, but they were able to buy their way out <laughs> with money. I'm telling you, and I've noticed that everywhere this man went, he was blessed by the Lord. He never lost his job during layoffs, etc. when he lived in the United States. I'm going to tell you something. He would say, we rejoiced that we suffered shame for his name. But the Lord said unto Ananias in Acts 9 about Paul, Go ahead about Paul, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him great things, and that he must suffer for my name's sake. Paul was going to suffer for preaching that Jesus name baptism. Read about it, Acts 19:5, or Acts 8:12 through 16, or Acts 10:43 through 48, Acts 2:37 uh, through uh, 42. Read about the name of Jesus. Preach what those guys preach, the apostles. Don't be afraid; they can only kill your body. Have faith in the resurrection. Okay, that's what the early church had. You can kill us, but we're going to resurrect. Acts 9, Ananias went his way, entered into the house, put his hands on, laid hands on Paul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto you on the Damascus road, he has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So Paul got his eyes healed and got the Holy Ghost. But look here, Acts 22. And one Ananias came unto Paul, Paul, this is Paul's version, came to me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. Immediately I looked up at him then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear his voice. Jesus is the only one you can see as God. That's the voice of God. For you will be his witness unto everyone what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Get up and be water baptized and wash away your sins. Baptism removes your sins. Calling on the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord. There it is. He's going to bear Jesus' name before the Gentiles. Well, that's where we will stop. That was fast and furious. <laughs> but persecution is normal for the soul winner. I want to pray for you right now that you would have courage and strength, okay? Boldness to preach the name of Jesus. Don't worry about the persecution. At least in America, they're not killing Christians yet. Okay, places like Pakistan and a lot of the Muslim countries, they are because Islam fears Christianity uh, because it's a false religion. Jews fear Christianity because that's a false religion. Let me tell you something. People that believe in the Trinity, that's a false religion. Let me pray for you right now. Jesus, I pray for every soul winner that is watching this video today. I pray you put a hedge about their minds because that's where the devil fights them is in their mind. I pray that you give them the steadfast courage that comes only from your spirit. Give them a revelation, Lord God, about the resurrection. Help them to preach the word of God without fear. God, I pray, let your love overcome their fear. Let them give agape and to pour coals of fire on the persecutors' heads to cleanse their thoughts. So, God, I just pray for these people today. Lord, continue to use them. Let us be bolder than ever before in these last days, God, to declare your name among all nations. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Um, I hope uh, we'll see you again next time here on 153greatfish.com.